another episode of Get a Load of This. From the Silver Creek Studios, I'm Jared. I am Ryan. And we're shorthanded this week. Again. Yes, yep. again. Uh, Chuck ditched us. He bailed. Uh, I guess he, you know, he's learning what it's like to be a working man. That's right. And uh, he's a little, he was a little tuckered out after last week. And he, uh, we do have late nights on podcast. Nights. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, you know, whatever. He's a young man. He needs his rest. I suppose. Well, good for him. He's being responsible. He's I think getting so. to bed early, or he's yeah. playing Fortnite. Or he's playing Fortnite. Fortnite. He'll play. He was uh, no shit. He was up till two o'clock last night playing Jesus. Fortnite. And I was like, dude, this is getting a little bit, a <laughs> little bit out of hand. You know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and Joe is uh, is not yet back with us, but uh, I I promise he will be. Uh, he has given me all assurances that he intends. To come back, um, unfortunately, he he had a loss in his family, and uh, he's dealing with with that. So we wish him all the best and uh, and our condolences, and uh, we look forward to having him back when he is ready and willing. Can't wait, Joe. We miss you. Yep, definitely. Well, I thought we would try something new. Um, I don't know if we'll do this every time or once a week or once a month. I don't know, but um, we drink so much beer on this show that it just seems logical that we should discuss it and sure drink and rate and review and not um, just drink for the sake of drinking yeah, exactly drink with purpose exactly god damn it so uh i thought we would start with um i'm a nostalgia fan as we kind of go back to on this podcast a lot and uh this is one of the older domestic kind of popular beers so we're going to start with miller high life so the way we kind of thought this out is that this would be the the official beer of episode right. 40 whatever Seven. of uh, get a load of this is miller high life and uh yeah the champagne of beers That's right. which i i, I kind of like looking at the bottle i had it in a koozie but sexy, i just right? i just took it out it is it is a very nice bottle i haven't taken a sip of it yet no. it is but i am a sucker for packaging oh yeah so i i, I do i i love like the little stubby bud light mm-hmm. bottle budweiser bottles are the the whatever they got the american ver- right that freedom reserve, freedom reserve. And all that. yeah me too um yeah i just i'm a sucker for packaging yeah and and if it's in a cool new bottle or something i'm right. all about it um and this is a very nostalgic look mm-hmm. i don't know if it's always been in this type of a bottle but it's almost it, the shape of a champagne bottle yeah i think it has i mean it's they varied a little bit with the shape but it's very close to this um the label and everything is uh you know vintage yeah, and this school. is pretty much what it looked it's like all along let's hope it doesn't taste like shit yeah so uh this <laughs> I, I don't is, think uh, i've ever had one of these really i have drank a lot of beer yep, and i know i think uh, every you know variety and all across the country uh and in europe hmm. and i don't know that i've ever had a miller highlight miller highlight then at least that i don't remember so i mean that's so we're gonna a, drink on the air and, that i probably uh, had one <laughs> bear with our our gulps and burps and stuff here we so, go here we go miller high life Yeah. Not a fan, huh? I like it. It's I mean, all right. It, it's I not mean, the best beer I've ever had, but... Yeah, it's drinkable. Yeah. It's definitely got a bit of a, um, a wang to it, if yeah. you will. I mean, it's, right. got, it's got something there. It's. It, I think it's like a... It's not even like a Budweiser. It's... <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely got more yeah. flavor to it, more body to it. I don't know if that's the right word or not. All the beer snobs out there. Now you've been drinking a lot of light beer, though, so... That's true. Is, uh... That's true. Lately, I have yeah, just a lot, a lot of Bud Light, but uh, right, it's a good beer. Yeah. I, I mean, I think if I was to start and finish a night with it, it, I, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd be fine. It'd get the job done. Yeah, but I, I've been drinking. I've already had a couple of Bud Lights, right. so yeah, you know, probably tainted my palate a little <laughs> bit. So I don't really intend to have a snooty, snobby type of review where we discuss the, the thickness of the head and how it sticks to the side of the glass and, uh, you know, the oakiness and whatever right so we're not gonna do all that um that's not who we are we're gonna just say do we like it how does it compare to what we do like um and kind of get into like did your dad ever drink this or your grandpa or when's the first time you tried it apparently right, right now. now yeah no i think uh you know it's a beer that you it's like you always knew it was around there used yeah. to be commercials for it all the time on television and and uh and it's a yeah it's a memorable it's it's their i guess it's their their pinnacle yeah, right it's right. their budweiser it's well and so i wanted to discuss that a little bit i did a little bit of research you know as much as you can do on 
Wikipedia or you whatever. Never, you never do a little bit of research. <laughs> yeah, I never. I always research something. But um, apparently this was created in 1903, which again is part of why I wanted to do it because it's such an old beer. Right. And as I was looking into a lot of other beers, there's so many are so much more recent than that. Not Budweiser. Well, right. <laughs> but I think, well, when was Budweiser? I don't recall. I, was, but, I think it was 1890s or okay. it was earlier than that. So I, yeah. Miller, the company, had been around since the 1850s, I believe, 1855, I think. But this was their first foray into a kind of a, a beer that people could bring home with them right. and could afford. Right. Now, at the time it came out, I think what I was reading was it was, it was a high-end beer. Um, it was still considered affordable. It wasn't as expensive as, you know... Um, the wealthy only could afford right the other thing too was chilled beer like getting cold beer home with you was a hard a thing to do yeah, yeah yeah sure yeah and so this was their effort to provide that to people um so it used to be and it still is their kind of their main beer so where budweiser has budweiser um miller has miller high life so mm-hmm. this is their flagship beer i guess and Coors was Coors banquet right now, since then, it has become an affordable beer, so it's priced in line with like Bush and. Um, so, would you buy a six pack? This was a twelve pack. You know, and how, 12 pack and, and, uh, well, well, how much was it? <sighs> now you put me on the spot. I'm trying to remember. Um, Thirteen, fourteen was, bucks. Oh, I don't even think it was that much. Really? Yeah, yeah it was definitely good. less. Yeah, um, I should have known before we started. Yeah, you're right. But, uh, yeah, so now it's definitely a lower price beer. I don't think that it's necessarily frowned upon or anything. It's just not, you right. know, where, uh, like a Michelob Ultra, and we're only talking the domestic standards here, but that would be more expensive. Or like Michelob Ultra is more than Bud and Bud Ice or Bud Light. Right. But I think this is in line with Bush. Um, I'd rather punch myself in the dick than drink <laughs> Michelob Ultra. Really? Was it? Yeah. I kind of like Michelob yeah, Ultra. Like, we'll have to do a review of that at some point. Yeah, uh, I'll pass on that one. Yeah. But uh, I've had it. <laughs> I, I'm just not a fan of it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people think the Bud Light shit, and I and I love Bud Light. I, I catch a lot of mm-hmm. flack for drinking Bud Light, but uh, I like it. It's a good, yeah. tasty beverage. And uh, but I, I still like Budweiser. Right. I, I don't like. I don't like Bush Light. I think it has a weird aftertaste, but, you know, so I don't know. I'm just, everybody's different, you know. They are. Yeah. When I was down in Dallas, I was drinking uh, uh, Shiner. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, sh- what is it? Shiner? What the fuck is it called? Yeah, Shiner Bach. Is that what it's called? Fuck, there is a Shiner Bach. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. But it's a Texas beer. Hmm. Anyway, that's what they had at the okay. at the open bar. Whatever. That's a that's a delicious beer. Hmm. So, and that's, I guess, the, the way that things are going nowadays is that, uh, you know, you're missing out. You, you you know, it makes you try other things. Yeah. You don't know what you're missing when right. you go to another city. Um, but there's a lot of sleepers. I think this is yeah. not a terrible beer. No, it's not. And I think part of living in St. Louis, uh, it's just well, Anheuser-Busch yeah. all the time, everywhere. Yeah. So, I think Miller products are less common anyway. Right. And people are less likely to try yeah, before, them. You catch flack for it. Before Anders Bush was, was purchased, yeah. I mean, you would get shit for drinking oh, a yeah. Miller product. Yeah. And, and, a lot of know. bars won't stock it. And, no. Um, well, now I think that's changed. Yeah, so. I think it is changing. So uh, I had somebody ask me when I brought this up to them, uh, they, they said, well, what about Miller Genuine Draft? I thought that was their main beer. And I kind of had to do some research because I've heard of Miller, Miller right. Genuine Draft. And right. I thought, oh, maybe that is. And that's really recent. I forget when it came out, but it was like 85 or something. Is really? when Miller Genuine Draft came out. Wow. And I think it's one of the, it's like cold filtered, almost like an ice beer. Right. Um, what do you think about it? Bud Light didn't come out until 81 or right. 80 or 81, something like yeah. that. And yeah, I mean, there's, and that was a long time. We, we think it wasn't that long ago. That <laughs> right. was a long time ago for... For yeah. the youngsters listening. I do think at some point when we do another review with, you know, some of the light beers, um, it's pretty interesting how uh, Miller Light, Coors Light, uh, Bud Light all came out in a, within a short amount of time. I think Miller Light was the first one, the first yeah. light beer of any kind. It was. I, I believe you're correct, yeah. And uh, But, again, that was, re- that was in the 70s right. and, and Bud Light in 81. So, to me, that's so recent compared to this 100 yeah. years ago that, um, I don't know, I just find it fascinating. Yeah, it's cool. No, and, and you know, it's good that beers last like that because, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know. I like nostalgia. I like it. I do too, which again, like I said, this is over 100 years old, 115-year-old brand. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool, and it's still around, it and you side? can get it cheap. It says established, uh, what does it say? Yeah, right on the freaking bottle, 1903. 1903, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. 
the champagne of beers. And apparently there was a time where they didn't have that slogan. Um, and then they brought it back like, I don't know, 30 years ago or yeah. something. And, uh, and the fact that it's a clear bottle, that was a big yep. selling point for them too. That's yeah. why they call it the champagne. Cause it's right. so pretty to look at or whatever. Right. It looks like a fucking beer. Anyway, that's not the topic <laughs> of, uh, I think we, we beat the shit out of Miller yeah. high life there. Yeah. The official beer of episode 47. That's right. 47. 47. So to recap, you're not a big fan. You would prefer Bud Light. Oh, I would. But it's an okay beer. Yeah, I wouldn't turn it down. Yeah. Um, I don't know that it would be my first six pack I'd pick up at the liquor store, but, um, but yeah, it's it's good. You know. Yep. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't pass it up. <laughs> uh, there's there are beers like I said, it's Michelob Ultra. I would I really yeah I would I don't know if I'd turn it down. I'd have to be pretty drunk really to say like all right uh, fine I'll drink for it a while Ultra. that was my go to anytime I bought it's beer watered I was buying down, Michelob man. Ultra. There's there's like really? nothing to it. There's no I mean, flavor to it. There's almost every light beer is kind of like that. Yeah, see, Bud Light has flavor. Okay. Uh, Miller Light has flavor. We're gonna have to do a taste test. Miller or uh, Bud Light and Mick Ultra. Oh, I guarantee. Well, I mean, are we ta- well not a blind, just like a pref- do, which do you prefer? Uh, you know, and we'll compare there's no, them. And- there's no point. <laughs> I know. Hey, no, uh, yeah, I get. It's you. all about what Ryan likes. That's, well, yeah, everybody should recognize that. Right? <laughs> no, so uh, all right, what else we're we gonna talk about today? Uh, we uh, well, streaming television. Yeah. So we we've, we've kind of touched on uh, you know we both cut the cable mm-hmm. and and uh, we don't have you know, uh, direct TV or dish network or anything right. like that. And, and I think that's the way the majority of the nation and maybe the world is going is that people don't use these major providers. Mm-hmm. And most of what we watch is over the internet and it is on demand. And, and, and I think uh, a lot of people that still do have direct TV or cable or whatever, right. uh, are also streaming Netflix and Hulu. Right. you know, they're so well, they definitely are. And, and, and then the advent of the DVR and, right. and just the ability to, yeah, not really set aside time to 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 watch your shows. It's yeah. whenever you have time. Mm-hmm. So we were going to talk about you know the impact on yeah. pop culture and on society of. So we've touched on this the topic of the technology of it before, but we kind of want to get into, like you said, what's the impact? What's the effect been of how you watch TV and take in a show? You know, yeah. it used to be weekly, right? Right. Um, and you'd sit and talk about it afterwards, and you'd go to work and talk to yeah. your coworkers about it, and, well, and it, think about if if it was that type of show. Some shows each week is different. There's no continuing storyline, right. you know. Right. Um. And I think that's changing a lot too. Most of, a lot of these new shows is like a season long story, right? And you right. have to follow it. Sometimes multiple. I mean, look at The Walking yeah. Dead. The Walking Dead hmm. is probably well, it's, it's one of the greatest examples, I think, because. Well, it's what nine? See, I don't know, eight seasons in or something like that. I don't yeah, know. It's quite like a few. That. But I didn't watch it the first right. four or five seasons, and it was awesome that I was able to catch up mm-hmm. and watch four or five seasons and be like, "All right, now I'm back in real time." In three days. I almost yeah, a little longer than, but it was it was quick. <laughs> right. Um. But I almost wish I I hadn't. I almost yeah. wish that I had just waited till it was all done because right. now it kills yeah, me to wait to for wait. It. You know, a year. Well, yeah, forever. It's like used to be I'd finish a season. Like, All right, moving on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Ten seconds later, I'm watching yeah. the next season. There is no such thing as a cliffhanger. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I did that um, with The Walking Dead. I did it with Sons of Anarchy. Uh, I did it with uh, Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Breaking Bad, one of the greatest television shows yeah. ever produced, in my humble opinion. Um, but, yeah, that that definitely is different than Who Shot J.R., and an entire summer yeah. of speculation about a honestly not that great of a television show. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess at the time it was a good. It, it was. It doesn't hold up. I don't think. But yeah. Uh, so I was but thinking that really captivated the country. Yeah. I mean, that, oh, for sure. That, that was maybe that was the on world. magazine covers oh, yeah, it was and everywhere news and yeah. But I I was thinking about that how uh, daytime soaps and <laughs> soap operas were, and you had the evening the primetime ones too, but. Um, that was kind of in my mind. That's the beginning of the ongoing story, right? Every yeah. week, yeah, picked up the where the last one left off. Right. There was always a cliffhanger, drama, whatever. <clears throat> and that I feel like, with especially with streaming media where it is now, it's almost what you expect. Like it's got to be a continuing story. I want to be left hanging, and then as soon as I start the next one, let's see what happens. You right. Know? 
So well, it's almost like we, owe, in. we they, owe it all to soap operas. Well, yeah, they got to get you hooked. That's the, it's, right. that's all about the hook. And, yep. and uh, you, you made me think, of, talking about that, you made me think <laughs> of the Dukes of Hazard. You know, I was like, yeah. well, and it wasn't really the end of every episode. The ep- episode's closed up pretty well. Yeah. But in between the commercial breaks, the car would be in midair. Right. It's like, are the Duke boys going to be able to get out of this one? I don't know. You know, and, and it was that Merle Haggard or someone doing that shit. <laughs> so did I ever tell you we weren't allowed to watch? <laughs> yeah, we, we've covered that. <laughs> no, I know. Well, you, sh- uh, I, I would like to say go back and catch up on it, but it doesn't hold up. No. I've, I've tried to watch the Dukes of Hazard when it's been on uh, whatever channel they, well, they Daisy aired it on. holds up. She, yeah. Yeah, yeah, on video, <laughs> not not in real oh, life. Yeah, though. Well, <laughs> Catherine right. Bach, yeah, she got old too. <laughs> hey, everybody gets old. Uh, yeah, so I do remember though. Like, it seemed like it would stand out when a show like that would have even just two episodes that were, you know, to be continued. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's yeah. gonna go on. It's you a know, huge deal. It yeah. was every season. There'd be like one pair right. of episodes right. that were connected. Well, know? and it was. It, it was, was a, a formula event. that the, the, yeah. that the, the networks had. They're like, all right, this season you, you're gonna get your fifteen or twenty episodes, mm-hmm. and you're gonna get one very special episode, and then you're gonna get one cliffhanger, <laughs> right. and this is how we do things, and this is yeah. how we, you know, this is how we keep the people's interest. And it worked, I guess. Yeah, it definitely worked. But so that, but the whole water cooler talk of of the seventies and eighties about last night's episode of Mash or, or whatever it happened to be, yeah, you know, that that is that is gone. Mm-hmm. That 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 those conversations don't happen. But in my workplace, well, not anymore because they all got laid off. <laughs> but uh, but the group that I used to work with, we would talk about. You know, we would finish up uh, binging. Right, uh, an entire season, yeah, and then um, you talk about it. Well, I mean, we'd talk about it, or we would say, all right, I'm out. I, I need the next show. What do I watch oh, yeah. next? Sure. And then it would be everybody yeah. be like, oh, you need to watch uh, Better yeah. Call Saul. You need to watch, right. you know, whatever. And it was like, oh, shit, I got to write this stuff down, you know? <laughs> and that was that, that just took its place. So mm-hmm. it's not a bad thing. Those conversations are still happening. They're just, yeah. they're just formulated differently nowadays. Now, I do still hear uh, coworkers talking about the only one I can really think of that has that sort of water cooler talk is Game of Thrones. So it's still, never you know, it's, it's on HBO. Yeah. Um, I don't think do you as watch far it? as I, well, no, we don't have HBO and okay. I don't want to pay for the Go subscription or right, whatever. Right. But, um, I don't think, as far as I know, I don't think you can watch an entire season. Well, not the current season, right? So they have the previous seasons that you can watch if you had an HBO subscription. Right or the previous season, but the current one is still week to week. I think I don't quote me on that, but I, cause I do hear they people saying, they did don't you watch release Game of Thrones last one night? season at a time? Like they do on Netflix right. and, the, and those types week of, yeah, you got to still yeah. wait. Yeah. So there still yeah. are a handful of shows like sure. that, that have that same water cooler talk type of vibe. But generally it's, you know, did you watch the whole season of whatever show? Yeah, right. Um, and there's more and more. So the other thing with that was, so there was always a season or a show that had already been on tv and then after the whole season is over and then another three months goes by then it's on netflix so anybody who had been watching it on television had already seen it and you would always have to say no no don't don't tell me don't tell me i'm gonna i'm gonna binge it on netflix in (laughs) six months right but now there's so many new shows on netflix that are made by netflix or made by hulu on hulu that come out and no one's ever seen it and you can watch the entire season right away that is the direction I think we're headed. Oh, yeah, definitely. And no, that and, content and, is every bit as good as the stuff absolutely. that's on the primetime network. You should so. watch Goliath. Oh, yeah. It's a really good show. It's got Billy Bob Thornton. It's on... Oh, right. Uh, I've seen... It's, it's on Amazon. Yeah. So it's not on Netflix, but it's an Amazon-produced mm-hmm. show. Really good. good? Okay. Really good. Really well done. And, uh, yeah, I like Billy Bob Thornton. He's a, he's a good actor. Now, I think at your recommendation, I started watching... Um, is it Sneaky Pete? Yeah, yeah. And that was really good. good. I show. only got... You know, I don't know. I, I think I finished the first season, and it was really good. I liked yeah. it a lot. Yeah. I didn't keep watching it just because I got distracted, but I do want to go back and watch more. Well, it's got Walter it White, good. too, in it. So uh, Yeah, 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 right. It's yeah. Uh, it's, a, that's it's a, a Sneaky ass. Pete's a great show. Yeah. The second season wasn't as good as the – but it's still good. Yeah. Just it wasn't as good as the first one. But, that, that you know, those things happen. I mean, there was – I don't know if there was a bad season of Breaking Bad, or but there was definitely a bad season of Sons of Anarchy. Um, but you know, yeah. you work through it. That's right. the beauty of streaming. Yeah. It's like, all right, well, I only got three more hours of this shit yep. and I'm moving on to higher ground here. But, uh, so a, a buddy of mine, and actually I got to give him credit for, uh, even recommending this topic in the first place. Um, but he kind of su- brought up the idea of shows that, uh, that we watched 
on TV week to week that mm-hmm. are now streaming. Mm-hmm. And so, and the way that our kids maybe are watching those shows different than how we experienced right. them, right? Right. So he he used the example of Lost, um, which at the time was my favorite show. I think it's still considered a classic all time. Oh yeah, show. it's up there. Um, but it's also one of the most disappointing endings of any show ever. Yeah, don't spoil it because I <laughs> I actually haven't watched it uh, at all. I never when it was on the air, never saw one episode. Wow. I can say the same thing about Twenty Four. Never saw mm. one episode. I try. I've attempted. Yeah. To start watching both of them, mm-hmm. I've not gotten hooked, hooked really by okay. either of them. Twenty twenty four. I I more so than Lost. I got probably two seasons into twenty four, and I just kind of fizzled yeah. out. Um, but Lost, I don't think I made it past like episode three really? or four or whatever. Huh. And I was just like, Jesus, you know. Plus, yeah. I think I know too much already. That could be. I know enough that it's like there's weird shit going on, right. and I, I don't know. I, I, if I had gone into it fresh and untainted, mm-hmm. yeah, I probably would have enjoyed it, and I probably would have been locked in. Yeah. But I, I knew too much, so there is that downside to it. Yeah. I think it was one of those shows where if you watched it week to week, you could definitely forget what happened the previous week. Just not maybe not the entire theme, but specific details. Right. And then maybe they'd have a recap. I think that was one of the last shows that actually said, you know, previously on Lost. And oh, they, would they show still do, you that, do that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of shows that don't. I want a recap and they don't do it. <laughs> but uh, But if you could watch it, you know, Right, as soon as you were done, watch the next episode. Then you don't forget everything. Right. Every, every little thing that happens in the next episode, you remember what that related to in the other mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. And it's just a different way of taking it all in. When you think about the production of these things, too, which is yeah. probably the more remarkable, maybe not more remarkable, but it's it's an interesting thing that, you know, we, we grew up watching cinema t- movies, right? Mm-hmm. An hour, two hour movie, an hour and a half, two hour movie. And it was exciting, mm-hmm. and we would go and we'd play, pay ten bucks to go sit in a theater and, and eat our popcorn and watch a movie. And the production quality was, eh, you know, it was good. In some cases it was really good, right? Other cases it was like that was kind of a shitty movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and nowadays we're watching and we're waiting and anticipating twelve hours right. of entertainment and a production quality that is second to none. Yeah. Um, and and if it's not, we're we're pissed. And it, and yeah, we're, and we're paying Amazon what a hundred bucks a year for it. We're paying Netflix <laughs> right. ten bucks a month or whatever it is. Yeah, um, just the difference in what the expectations are of the producers and and, yeah. and the actors and these studios, um, they're high, man. It, and it, it's it's really hard to entertain the masses yeah. nowadays. But um, I feel like so. Let's say there was a big sh- a blockbuster show on NBC, mm-hmm. and you started watching it, and halfway through the season, you were just like this kind of sucks. I don't want to watch this anymore. You were going to turn on CBS instead. You were going to find whatever else is on. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so NBC could lose their ass if people start, stop watching a show. Cause not only are you not watching that show, chances are you change the channel and then it's harder to come back. Right. Right. So there's the lead ins. There's more weight to each show for Mm -hmm. each of these stations. They're constantly competing. They're moving their lineup around to try to, you know, keep you hooked. right? Right. Right. Where with, let's say, Netflix, if there's some show that you start and you don't like it, you don't say, I'm dropping Netflix. You just go to the next <laughs> you show. Go back like, to the menu and yeah. find the next one. Yeah. And and they're constantly trying to come out with new stuff to hook you, and they right. don't want to put bad content out. But I feel like there's less weight behind it if they if they have a bomb, right? And right. some people are going to like it. But, well, but yeah, the networks, and I think that maybe, maybe their downfall is if they don't evolve is that yeah. they still do that like well we want this show to lead into the next show mm-hmm. because we want to keep people i don't know I, my parents probably still do turn on a station and leave it on like right. they'll watch wheel of fortune on channel five and and then they'll fold they'll, they'll fall right into the nbc tuesday night lineup right and if that's good mm-hmm. then they're gonna stay there and they're gonna sit through their commercials yeah. and they're gonna we don't do that at my no. house i mean we we basically almost never watch things live on television yeah if we do it's a sporting event it's a presidential speech it's it's some event um yeah it's, I, an, it's a sporting event do or you something think like maybe that. dvr or even further back vcr started getting away from that where you could just set the shows you want to watch dvr them yeah. and then sit down and just go through your catalog not right through well the definitely definitely we, we we kind of touched on this a little bit mm-hmm. uh earlier that 
well, like the MASH finale, hmm. right? So I, I mm-hmm. remember it. You, you're a little younger. You probably don't remember it. It was like 84, I think. Yeah, uh, I remember of it, but I don't remember it. Yeah. It was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. I was in third grade or fourth grade or whatever, mm-hmm. but it was a huge mm-hmm. deal. And the world stopped. Not the world. The U.S. I mean, yeah, everybody yeah. Sure. that night of the finale, everybody was watching the MASH mm-hmm. finale. And not everybody, but you know, you get my point. Yep. The majority of the country. And it was an event. It was yeah. It was huge. And there was no I mean, people had VCRs and sure some people taped it or whatever, but the majority of people wanted to see it mm-hmm. live. That we we will never be able to right. replicate that again. Right. Now, I think when Friends, the finale, a lot of people wanted to watch that live. Yeah. Seinfeld was mm-hmm. the same way. Cheers was earlier, but same way. Yeah. But but I think nowadays, you know, but let's take it's really just did you finish the season right. yet? I mean, if right. you, if you know it's the last season, then it, it's really just oh, I haven't had it. Ch- I'm on episode ten. I, I'll get there tonight probably. You right. Know, there's never like you said, we're not all going to be sitting down at seven o'clock on a Wednesday ever again, right? Yeah. We're not all. I mean, unless you're talking football, but for any of these types of programs, it's when are you going to get a chance to right. see it? I think Breaking Bad was the biggest event. The the finale of Breaking Bad was mm-hmm. the biggest event. And yeah. even still, it was you knew that if people were fans, they were going to watch it that night or close mm-hmm. to it or whatever. Um, you know, maybe the next day. By or then, you like had that. DVR, but yeah, you were still going to watch it pretty quick. Yeah, everybody was watching it pretty much pretty quick, but still, they made it was a, a big deal was made of it, and it was in the media, yeah. and it was it was all the talk, and um, yeah. So, I guess it's still it, it can happen, I guess, but it's just never going to be you know like it was. It's mm-hmm. never going to be you know. It's like you talk talk about Archie Bunker. All in the Family uh, was a groundbreaking television show. You know, it was had race relations and had the Jeffersons and mm-hmm. the Bunkers and, yeah. and all these things and Honky and you know all the you know <laughs> all these things that happened right. in that show. But I don't know that a show can have that type of impact. You know, to today because again the masses right. don't see it. I mean, Roseanne before <laughs> she got yeah. booted off the television was close to it i mean mm-hmm. she was able to gather yeah. that type of an audience that wanted to see it mm-hmm. as it at, you know close mm-hmm. to as it happened yeah um but yeah that just that it's the whole social cultural event of television yeah. i don't think it'll, it's gone i it's, think you're probably right it's gone i mean this is not as it's not as real time i guess as it, as it was it could still happen yeah. i suppose but and that kind of made me think uh we didn't really have spoilers i mean you did with movies but with shows if you missed Tuesday night or whatever, you didn't say, "Oh, don't tell me, don't tell me." Right? right. When the fuck were you going to see it? If you'd you'd be like, "What happened? Tell <laughs> right, me all about right, it." You know, you want right. to know exactly what happened to Ross and Rachel or whatever, right? But now it's like, "Don't tell me shit." I'm either going to have it DVR'd or I'm going to watch it in a month when it comes out. Right. So yeah, that's just the a ability whole to pause thing, television <laughs> is another yeah. thing. Pausing live television is is it's I abuse it. Hmm. My and my kids yell at me. Like, you don't have to pause the TV every time we walk in. I'm like, well, I I like to hear the dialogue. Yeah. I want to hear every uh-huh. little bit. And yeah, if if someone's gonna walk in to the room, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it. Yeah. Um. But you know, I think about <laughs> think about when I was a kid. My dad loved Taxi, hmm. mm-hmm. the television show. Mm-hmm. Judd Hirsch and Danny DeVito. And it, it's, it was a great show. I I didn't appreciate it whenever it was out. Yeah. I ended up watching it on Nick at Night when I was in college. It was on every night, and I watched I watched Taxi and Welcome mm-hmm. Back, Cotter. Great shows. Um. <laughs> yeah. But I wasn't allowed to talk during Taxi. Oh yeah. Like and and Dallas and Falcon Crest. My mom would yell at me. My dad was very like, look. Taxi's on. Mm-hmm. Shut the hell up. Mm-hmm. A commercial will be on in about two minutes. Then you can talk. <laughs> right. And you got about two minutes to talk. You better get out what you got to say. Other than that, shut the hell up. Um, and it, yeah, I mean, I got in trouble yeah. for, for talking over the television right. show. Um, and it's like, that that doesn't happen anymore. Now it's like kid, the kids walk in. I'm like, pause. Right. What what can I help you with? <laughs> what yeah, can I do true. for you? I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, my dad was that way with Star Trek. Yeah. And then Star Trek, the next generation. You know, it was... His big bowl of popcorn. We'd sit down and watch Star Trek, and yeah, you don't talk during a show like that. But yeah, my uh, my grandfather was he watched Gunsmoke and he watched uh, you know Bonanza. It was, by the time I was old enough to walk around and, mm-hmm. and, and interrupt, they were all reruns. Yeah, yeah. But he would still yell at me. 
<laughs> and I'm like, man, you know, he has to have seen these before, Maybe you know. Not. But no, I, so I would choose just not to be around yeah. him when he was watching TV. I was like, oh, I'm gonna leave that guy alone because yeah. uh, he clearly wants to watch his television. And I, I got too much to talk. See, that's about. how I am now with my wife and her podcasts. If she's listening to a podcast, you just run don't away. bother talking or even being around because she's gonna get so irritated. She doesn't even listen to this one anymore now, yeah, does she? She she actually does. She gives uh, does she? gives us a listen. Yeah, as right. soon as I post it. <laughs> Well, fair enough. Yep. Maybe we should start talking about true crime. That's right. And she, yeah. She'd dial in. How would you murder someone? We already had that. But, <laughs> we um, didn't do how, you, how would you murder, did we? We did how would you rob a bank. I thought we did serial killers well, we and did, how you would do it. I thought. I don't think we did how you would well, do okay, it. Well, okay. We should do that sometime. Yeah, we'll work on that. That's pretty good. Because <laughs> I've thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's called evidence. That's right. <laughs> prank caller. Prank caller. Um, so... Back to uh, the e- the um, episodes that were an event, right? So an right. event show. Um, you mentioned, let's just go through in our lifetime, but you mentioned the MASH finale. Right. Um, can we kind of work our way forward? Do you recall what are some of the other big ones? So in the 80s, what were some of the other like? Usually it's a finale, but sometimes it'd be a Yeah, in the 80s. A premiere even. Um, I, here, this is going to sound weird. Maybe not weird, but just dorky. Golden um, Girls finale. No. The premiere of ALF okay. was an event. Really? Now, I was... I guess I don't remember. I was probably... I remember I watching when that started. I was probably 10 years old. Okay. Um, I want to say it came out on a Tuesday. Hmm. I, I'm not sure if it was on a Tuesday. Maybe it was a Tuesday or Thursday. Maybe it should have been Monday. I don't know. We'll have to research that. But I was playing at my friend's house, and it, the same guys always played together. We played basketball or baseball. Whatever the season was, we were playing that sport. And I remember we, it was basketball, and we were at my buddy Jim's house and we're all on the back. He had a nice court in his backyard. Um, really a patio with a hoop, but you know, <laughs> it was good. It was nice. Mm-hmm. And we were out there, you know, playing horse or whatever the hell we were doing. Yeah. And we were all watching the clock. Like, cause we knew at seven o'clock this show Alf was going to premiere huh. and the commercials that, that were yeah. leading up to it were, they were hilarious. It was this, puppet Mm -hmm. monkey looking thing i don't even what the hell it was i mean this alien thing and we're like oh my god that thing's hilarious Mm -hmm. we gotta we gotta watch it and so Mm -hmm. when the it got to be 6 45 it was like all right we gotta go we're not gonna make it home in time to watch alf Mm -hmm. and everybody scattered and we all went home and we watched alf and whatever happened after that and the next day we talked about it yeah and alf as much as people want to make fun of it um was a cultural phenomenon in itself it was a pop culture uh thing and uh and i I actually i heard this today on the radio that uh they're talking about rebooting now oh really yeah so the the same guy that did his voice i was gonna uh, say originally was that guy somebody famous i don't know his name could tell you or something yeah i I have no idea but i know what alf's real name was and i know what planet he was from really yeah he was from melmac okay uh and his real name was gordon shumway on the planet Melmac, the but they called him that? Alf because Alf stands for alien, alien life form. Alien life form, yeah. But uh, no, there was a cartoon, a Saturday yeah. morning cartoon about There it. were dolls and everything. Oh, yeah. man, I loved Alf. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have dolls or anything like that. I don't think I had a lunchbox either, but I was I was into it, man. I watched mm-hmm. anything Alf related. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I was a big <laughs> Alf fan, but that was an event. So, yeah. uh, you know, going forward from that, I, I, I really don't, I guess Cheers uh the finale of cheers was in the you know what the cosby show that was there were big ones there Mm -hmm. i don't i can't name an episode but there were big episodes um yeah there i mean there were there were big ones i know my sister would say say probably the facts of life was there was big ones when they were when they came back after they had all graduated they they were living with mrs garrett or whatever that was a big deal to her i remember watching that because i had to um (laughs) But, you know, do you remember? And this wasn't a show. This was a mini series, I guess. Uh, v. Yeah. Oh, the, the that's a great one. That was that a huge was an event. event. Yep. Yeah. They really. But that's just that. that's the key. There is this publicity mm-hmm. and what they had to do, how much money the networks were put into yeah. pumping something up and getting you so riled up. Yep. Uh, that was actually a pretty it was a mini series. It was. And I remember, I mean, for me at, at the age I was, it was scary. I remember yeah. watching that show and being like tense and anxious Dude, with these you made me think. aliens and peeling skin off and Yeah. Like, that was crazy stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh but you just made me think of something. Uh Geraldo. Okay. Yeah. And opening Al Capone's vault. 
That's right. So that, <laughs> I mean, I, I know exactly where I sat. I sat next to my I mom thought and you were dad's. say when he got his nose broke. By no, <laughs> I don't remember where I was with that one. <laughs> but I remember where I was when that vault got up. So we started watching in the living room. My mom and dad, my sister and I were watching him, you know, try to crack into Al Capone's vault. Mm-hmm. And it was taking forever. And they weren't finding <laughs> shit. And so we, yeah. be like, you got to go to bed. You got to go to bed. And mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I, I want to see what happens. You know, what are they going to find, you know? And uh, so my pa- everybody goes up to the rooms or whatever. My dad goes into, my mom and dad went in their bedroom. They turned mm-hmm. it on in their room. And I didn't have a TV. Maybe I, yeah, no, I don't think I had a TV in my room at the time. And uh, if I did, it was like a little black and white right. deal or whatever. And, uh, and so I remember sitting next to my dad's side of the bed, leaning up against his nightstand, watching Geraldo finally give up and say, <laughs> well, looks like this is a bust. Nice. I'm sorry, guy. You know, but Time that, for bed. <laughs> that was an event that was publicized and yeah. pumped up like right. crazy and yeah, almost ruined Geraldo. Uh, he somehow found a way to make a career. <laughs> I don't know how know. the hell, but... <laughs> That was a big one. Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there was. Yeah, I could probably. As we sit here, I'll probably think yeah. of other ones too. Yeah. That, that there's, there's definitely a lot of finales, right? So anytime there was a show that was popular and they were going to yeah. wrap it up, it was. You got to be there on Friday night. They're going to oh, yeah. end of the show or whatever. Act like you'd never see it again, and that's that's also kind of the cool thing about yeah. the internet too is that now pretty much anything, you know, it doesn't matter how shitty of a show it was, mm-hmm. you can find it. You know, yeah. you you'll be able to. You know, at some point, find it on YouTube or streaming somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a, I don't know that this was a cultural event. I watched the uh, Bruce Willis roast okay. on Comedy Central, and I've always been a big Bruce Willis mm-hmm. fan. Um, I I loved Moonlighting, and it was a show that my mother and I watched together, and it it was groundbreaking in that it was a dramedy. And my mother liked it because of the drama, soap opera type aspects of it, and I liked it because Bruce Willis was funny, mm-hmm. and it was it was a comedy. Um, so, and then Die Hard came out, mm-hmm. so that started like in the early '80s, Moonlighting, and then '84 or five was when Die Hard came out, and I was like, oh my god, this guy's amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, did you know that Bruce Willis was a musician? I think I knew that. I mean, he's I've seen him like maybe playing harmonica yeah, and singing. Yeah. Yeah. So he plays harmonica and uh, he actually released three albums. Oh, I didn't know that. Three. Three albums. Count them. Three albums. And, Did he pay uh, for these albums himself? No, I think <laughs> he was a big enough star that, and he yeah. had a good enough agent and publicist mm-hmm. or whatever that they said, yeah, we can make this work. Hmm. So not only did he release an album called The Return of Bruno, which I owned, uh, on cassette. Okay. Um, but HBO did a special, like an hour long mockumentary, documentary type thing about Bruno, this alter ego of Bruce Willis, <laughs> okay. and his impact on music. And it it made it went back, and he had uh, been offered to come to Woodstock, but he turned it down. Hmm. <laughs> nice. But he had like Ringo st- in this. Ringo Starr right. talked about Bruno and, uh-huh. and uh, who else was in there? Was a, a couple other big stars that that were in as well, but <laughs> that was an HBO event. That right? Yeah. Probably I'm the only asshole that <laughs> that watched it. I actually taped it and watched it repeatedly, and uh, yeah, but I, I don't know if that was an event, but it, well, it was yeah. an event. It was an event for me. It made a. It was a big deal for me. You know. So that reminded me when you said HBO. Um, was there an event? For I feel like I, I I can picture it and I can think of the name. Uh, for comedians, there was like an HBO comedy. Oh, the young sp- comedians deal. Yeah, the well, what they, was it I called? Yeah, what? Uh, shit, comic relief. Comic relief. They had Whoopi Goldberg yes. and Billy Crystal and right. Robin Williams. And I think now, was what, Eddie Murphy in there for a little I bit. Feel Maybe like not. he was. Now was that like a one night thing, and then they, they would they, do it every year, or was it, it like a yeah. series? Yeah. So that was an event, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedy yeah. relief. And it, it, it was like WrestleMania of comedy, and that was like a fundraiser or something. Yeah, I think they did it for some charity. Yeah. It's probably for starving relief. children or yep. something like that. But okay, yeah. so I do remember that being a big deal. And those were a big deal. Yeah. Whoopi Goldberg and Billy Crystal all over the place. Yeah, they were, and you know that was the heyday. Well, the first heyday of of stand up yeah, comics. Right. You know, we're in a new heyday mm-hmm. of stand up comics, but uh, that was in the Eddie Murphy, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams. Right. There was a lot of good ones, you know, um, in those eighties. Yeah. Um, hmm. But yeah, no, yeah, comic relief was good. I I, I enjoyed it. Saturday Night Live was was an event. 
Yeah, um, definitely. It doesn't seem like it is today. Maybe I'm too uh, old no. and crotchety, but um, but it used to. It seems like those were a big deal. Another big deal was whenever uh, I think it was the 20th anniversary of Saturday Night Live, which would have been 95, 90, something like yeah, right okay. around there. Yeah. Um, that they no, I take that back. It was the 15th because it was okay. 1990, 15th anniversary of Saturday Night Live, hmm. and they did a compilation special. And it, everybody, everybody recorded it Hmm. and me and my friends watched it over and over and Mm -hmm. over again. And that's how, I mean, I was too young to remember wild and crazy guys and, (laughs) and, uh, and Rosanna, Rosanna, Dana, and those types of things from the early days of, Mm -hmm. and the samurai chef, the Belushi samurai chef (laughs) and stuff like that. Um, but that was the first time I had seen that stuff. And that Mm -hmm. was huge of it. David Letterman did a 10 year anniversary right around the same time. And he did all of his stupid, the, the best of the stupid human mm-hmm. tricks, the stupid pet tricks. Mm-hmm. Those were events. Mm-hmm. Th- th- those yeah. were things that, I mean, we all recorded it and watched it over yeah. and over and over again. It was a, you know. Yeah, that's true. Big deals. Yep. It's a different world now with streaming media. is just. Well, everything's so fleeting. Yeah. Everything's just like, oh yeah, it's right. cool now. And, and the next day. As you know, soon as a, a show you genuinely enjoy and love that show and talk to people about it. And a month later, you can't hardly remember the name of it or who was in yeah. it. You know, it's just like on to the next thing. I have a sh- so this is not quite the topic, but it it it's one of the things that bothers me about network television. Um, but it's also the good thing about streaming television is the good shows that don't make it on the network can be brought back. Yeah, right. Um, and here's a show that was ended too soon. I don't think there's any way they could bring it back. But it's called Life on Mars. It was a, originally a British television okay. show that they brought over to the U.S., and I think mm. they only did two seasons, maybe a season and a half, and they cut it short. Uh, they, I think it's season two. They didn't even finish it, and they mm. were forced to, to mm-hmm. complete the show. But I loved that show, yeah. and it was probably, I guess, 02, 03, around that mm-hmm. time frame when that show was out. It was an it was a great television show, mm. and uh, maybe it was later than that. Um, but, yeah, it's like, that's kind of the beauty of Netflix and Hulu mm-hmm. is that these now, if there's someone willing to produce it, and yeah. there's actors willing to act it and someone willing to write it. There's someone out there that'll put it mm-hmm. together and put it out there. And if it's got a, you know, the slightest audience, yeah. you know, cause there's a lot of shitty TV out there right. too. I mean, there's a lot of WB or is it, uh, you know, not WB, <laughs> yeah, the, what CW is it? Now. the CW or whatever, yep. um, that Archie and Veronica, what do they call that? Uh, Oh yeah. What is the name of that show? Oh, shit. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's good, but it's. I don't think the production quality is that good. I'd like. I mean, we, they, yeah. we could do so much better. There's so <laughs> many good concepts out there. What I still don't understand is the difference in the the business behind it. So right now on network television, you know, they're relying on advertising, right? Yep. So if your show's not doing well, then the advertisers aren't there, and then they're gonna bump your show from prime time to you know later or earlier or, right. or a different night or whatever. It's all about advertising dollars, right? But on Netflix, you don't have that, right? So it's all about keeping subscribers, gaining new subscribers, but keeping the ones you have. Right. So they got all these new shows coming out with big budgets, right? They're spending a lot of money on sure. some of these shows. Yeah. With not a single advertisement during or before or after the show. So where are How they? How are they making money? They must be able to tell. Obviously, they're tracking how many viewers are watching each of these shows. Right. And, and are they repeat viewers? Are they coming back? And all that, but it's just, it's a whole other mindset of how they I rationalize think, keeping a show around as opposed I think to networks. They're, they're selling our data. Yeah. That's, I don't think that's even a conspiratorial no. thing to say. I think that they're, they're tracking mm-hmm. behavior and they can sell that information. Um, I think that, yeah, the, the, what we pay for a subscription definitely is the crux of it, but hmm. are the majority of it. Um, I think eventually we will see commercials. I, yeah, I, I yeah, also God, think I that not. there's there's product placement. There's yeah. there, there's a lot of ways that they're sure. making they're making money of us. I think the biggest one, I, well, next to subscriptions is data. Mm-hmm. I think that this world is run on big data. Might even be bigger. They might make more off selling the data than they do. Yeah, off maybe. Yeah, eight dollar a month subscriptions. Or yeah, whatever, but I, it, I don't know. It's uh, it's a different world, and and yeah. it, it all revolves around around data. Right. And it's kind of it's kind of sad, but we all when we click through those acceptances, you know, yes, I yeah. I accept the the terms of this. 
That's what we're, we're telling them. Like, yeah, yeah. To collect information on me and sell it to the highest bidder, and, mm-hmm. and that's fine. I got no problem with that. Hmm. And I really, I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, a lot of people get pissed off about, oh, well, they're collecting data. It's like, well, are you doing something wrong? What, yeah. what do you care? You know, I, it does irritate me. I am one of those that, if I, you know, in perfect world, I would not have all that shit out there. Right. But I also know that there's no stopping it. So why fight it? You know, it's well, just, unless you go off the grid. Well, I right. Mean, yeah. They and only even then it's hard to. Know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. That goes so, back to the whole Tesla thing. You know, I know we're, we're running out of time here, and I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I was talking to someone about our Tesla episode, and that we talked about the data that is gathered by the car, mm-hmm. and that J- John, our guest that for that episode, said mm-hmm. that, well, they, they've assured their owners that that data is the owner of the vehicle's data, and they don't sell it. And I just reiterate my point. That, bullshit. Yeah. That, that, and, and the that, that, that doesn't make any sense that they wouldn't sell right. that data. Right. Um, they're tracking, you know, Uber does the same thing with their drivers. They track every hard stop mm-hmm. and fast acceleration. Hmm. They track every mile that they drive. And it's, you know, it's, it's foolish to think that everything that we do that is connected to the, mm-hmm. to the web is not factored in and sold right. to the highest bidder. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you, if you, disagree with that then that's yeah a you're foolish, pretty naive foolish stance yeah <laughs> yeah so i don't know yeah well um i think, I think we it's, could go it's, on for this we one, could. this one a lot yeah yeah but, uh, privacy and all that yeah open internet and everything yep um i think it's fun to, to think back to how we used to watch tv and the events and the crowding around the boob tube right yeah um and how it's changed now to where it's really you watch on your own right you you can, as a family, sit around and watch a, a show on Netflix, but really, you're just as likely to watch it by yourself yeah. in your room while well, they that, watch it in their that's room. That's one of the biggest things that pisses my wife off is that I <laughs> she doesn't want to stay up and, str- and, yeah. and binge stuff. And she'll watch one or two, and I'm like, well, I'm not tired. I'm going to mm-hmm. watch one more. And then mm-hmm. I fall asleep during that right. one more. Yeah. And then she's like, well, how far did you get? And I'm like, oh, uh-huh. know, I'm like three episodes ahead, you know? <laughs> So yeah, we I get in trouble for yeah. that, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I like the flexibility of being able to do that, but it does sort of drive you not drive you apart, but it doesn't bring you together like it used to. But uh, but hey, that's that's the way the world turns. That's right. It's it's hard work maintaining a family. Yeah, that's a whole other episode. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have uh, the event of your childhood or your life that you remember on television that we neglected to mention, mm-hmm. you know, tell us about it. Send us an email, uh, load this podcast at gmail.com or uh, hit us up on social media uh, at load this podcast on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And uh, we are still working. We are planning and building and uh, plotting, plotting, whatever you want to call it, uh, <laughs> to do video on mm-hmm. YouTube. There is one video out there. Uh, well, there's multiple videos yeah. out there. There's one that is not just a logo of, of and our voices. Um, it's coming. But you're yeah. going to see our ugly mugs soon enough. Get a load of this podcast on YouTube. And um, yeah, let us know yeah. your, your thoughts on it. And if you have any suggestions on crap that you'd like us to talk about, or if you want to complain about our episode uh, regarding attributes of women and that we were superficial <laughs> and uh, only talked about the physical attributes, let us know about that. Yeah. Uh, we will. We'd love to talk about it. Uh, if you might be able to tell that we did get some feedback on that. Um, I like a good a, a gal with a good sense of humor mm-hmm. and uh, and small feet. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, nice manicure. Pet- That's right. That kind. Of- so anyway, yeah, that's anyway. all I got, brother. <laughs> all right. So uh, as usual, ah, fuck, fuck the, the Cubs. Cubs. Yeah. Until next time, I'm Jared. I'm Ryan. And get a load of this. <laughs> <laughs>